So hello everybody. Oh gosh, start again. Hello everybody and welcome to this week's episode of the Magical Shit Show, where we talk about magic, the universe and everything, and then relate it to guts and pooping. Great fun. This week we welcome June Tranma from Wellbeing in New York. She's going to join us for this week. And then myself, Tamar and Claire as usual. So Claire, do you want to set us off by telling us what's happening in the universe? What's happening with the planets? I believe we're at a new moon. Is that correct? We are. On Monday, we have a new moon, which is June's birthday. A new moon in Scorpio, which is huge because Scorpio is the kind of, you know, the hidden part of self. And so to have a new moon in that is like you might be feeling really stirred up at the moment, like things coming to the forefront, things that you like. It's that whole kind of the color of this time is bringing up that which we often bury because we don't find, we don't make time to process stuff or we've got through life and we've just ignored these parts of ourselves. So don't be surprised if that comes up now to kind of be re-experienced, re-evaluated and then released um, because we have to go through the process sometimes literally in a 3D way of the what we're trying to let go of before we can let go of it we have to feel it again so it can't just be a memory of something bad happening something might play out to remind us of that memory because the sim the situation is so similar does that make sense so you've got all that coming on uh monday in the powerful sign of scorpio okay that's very interesting anyone got anything coming up at the minute do we know what the thing is that we're supposed to be tackling or are we yet to be hit with it, do you think? Go on, June. Okay. There will probably be some surprise things, I think, <laughs> I suspect. Um, so I'm waiting and I'm ready-ish, because as ready as you can be for a surprise, you know, people leap out at you and go, boo, and then you think, <laughs> well, I thought I was ready, but no. Um, <laughs> so, but um, yes, I, interesting what's happening with me at the moment it's to do with my bowels. You know, see, we can hold on to our bowels and our bladders too. Um, you know, uh, my children will never forgive me. I keep talking about them and they're adults now. They'll never watch this. Let's just. <laughs> my daughter used to hold on to her bladdy, bladder because she was so busy doing stuff. This was when she was tiny until she was absolutely desperate. And then she, you know, had accidents. Well, you know, we're all a bit like that. It's not just her. And um, I think we we can we can unconsciously say no. I don't I don't want to right now. Whatever. Um, and then you know, there's consequences to that. The bowels kind of dry up, and your body reabsorbs all the the, the stuff that shouldn't be being reabsorbed along with the water. Um, so then, um, so yeah. What's interesting for me is I just had a little bit of a revelation this morning because I was going, why am I so constipated right now? Because <laughs> I have not been for many, many years, whatever. Well, and then I thought, oh, yeah, actually, when I was a child, I was. So, you know, I'm taking loads of vitamin C that is supposed to be and other things that are helping balance me right now, um, including activated charcoal, magnesium, iodine, um, all these, all these things. Oh, and castor oil, castor oil on the navel. Mm, and an amazing discovery of mine. So, but I think this is definitely emotional. And I think it's old issues coming up. And you know what? I really hate it when people don't listen to me. <laughs> I really, really feel like I said that as clearly as I could. Why have you not heard me? Well, now I find myself locked out of my Instagram. Mm. So that's pressing all my buttons. <laughs> I, I accidentally clicked on a link that I shouldn't have. Oh, oh dear. So silenced in real life and on your social media. Mm -hmm. or not necessarily silenced but not yes being blocked mm -hmm. yeah blocked blocked good word so yeah yeah, yeah. physically mm -hmm. and emotionally mm -hmm. interesting so speaking yeah. of the bowels 
we were going to talk this week about parasite cleanses. Have either of you come across these yet? Yeah, so this is something I learned about on TikTok. Good old TikTok. I learned more how to be a functioning human being there than anywhere. And it was a lady on there called the Wooden Gypsy that was talking about a parasite cleanse. And I'd never really heard about this before. And of course, she was promoting the selling of the stuff. And it was the three things. There was Paragard, which had things like fennel and walnut and all the, all these kind of natural things that you took. And so you you had to sort of fast until about, I think it was about 11 in the morning. You took this stuff several times a day. And then you would take the charcoal to absorb because the idea was this stuff was killing off the parasites that live in your gut because the parasites thrive on what's in your gut and it throws the balance out. So you want to clear the parasites out so your gut microbiome is healthier, is the idea. So you take this stuff to kill the parasites and then you take the charcoal to absorb the dying and dead parasites and then they pass. I was not inspecting this. Some people inspect it. And then you also take stuff called MAG-07, which was magnesium and potassium, and that was supposed to get things moving. And I kind of thought maybe that on its own would be helpful. What I hadn't quite appreciated is that the charcoal not only absorbs that, but also any medication you're taking, possibly any vitamins. It's, so anything else, it's sort of absorbing everything. So I hadn't thought about the contraindication of it then affecting medication and things like that. So that was quite a learning curve. But I did feel a lot less bloated. Things moved. I don't like being too graphic on here. Things moved, shall we say. There was one occasion when I felt very, very unwell, like a stomach bug. And I think that was things dying off and shifting. But I absolutely felt less bloated and things were moving. And I really felt like it had done something. And I did that one probably about a year ago. And they say do it every six months or so. Of course, by then I've moved on to something else. and came across the castor oil. So I'll say this bit and then I'll kick over to you guys. I don't want to monologue. Um, so then I recently heard about one with castor oil. So I've come across a castor oil, June, about putting it on your stomach and helping with digestion and lumps and bumps and things like that, and also for wrinkles. Um, but this was that you've got castor oil tablets. You freeze them for two weeks. They didn't tell you the dosage, so I just picked the highest one. You freeze them for two weeks, and then you take five a night for a week or five days. Check five days, I think it was. Yes, 20 tablets. And you take them at night because I was thinking, castor oil, is this going to create some kind of epic? <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to crap myself or something. Didn't, because it was frozen, and so it slowly absorbs, and the oil acts as the charcoal does, absorbing everything to then pass it through. I did not feel less bloated. I don't feel like it particularly did anything. Things were moving regularly. That was quite nice. But I certainly didn't feel great and energised like I did for the first one. And everyone was raving about it. So for me, the Paragard one did more, and I felt an effect less so with the castor oil. So that's my history with the whole parasite cleanse. What say you guys? Well, I think that's really interesting. Um, I use castor oil nightly on I rub it on my abdomen around my liver to support the liver to remove the toxins. When I had my um multi-test to the electromagnetic frequency machine like a spooky but more than a spooky more than a rife that testing and it said you've got all these problems like it, leaky gut etc and it said you've got a parasite at that point because I had always been really like really and I am still a bit like really we've all got parasites we're kind of you know we're living organisms you know if you look at us under a microscope there's like we're a world worlds and worlds and worlds of um of life form and um he was like yeah you've got this parasite I think it was um was it ringworm no not ringworm roundworm or something like that anyway he was like right what you need to do is take this thing called paragon so that sounds like your para whatever and um but I, I said I can't take that one of the ingredients is garlic so I had to go off to a private homeopath and get the remedy made up without garlic and I'm still taking it. And what I like about this is the fact that I've been taking this now for maybe two or three months. And I take it in the morning, like, no, at night, half a teaspoon in water. That is it. I actually mix it with my L-glutamine because I'm just like, let's do it all at once. And um, when he tested me about a month ago, he was like, you literally have no parasites. He said, I've never seen that. 
And I was like, wow. That's a good thing, right? Are we supposed to? Oh, yeah. No, I think it means no negative parasites. Um, So none of the nasty things showing up. But I only had one anyway. And I have cats. So it kind of, you know, it's very difficult not to, you know, share a house and pick things up. So I'm still taking this stuff. I'm glad I don't have to do any crazy random kind of things with it. It's just really easy to take and it has been effective. But it's this, I remember... um, God, do I sound like I'm doing monologue? No, no, carry on. SIBO. Everyone here heard of SIBO? Yeah. As oh, you want to give us a quick summary intestinal. just for the listeners? Okay, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And I remember thinking, because my digestive story has been so long, a lifetime, that maybe I had SIBO because that would explain the gurgling guts, the kind of, you know, the constipation the kind of you know just everything being completely out of balance so with SIBO what they recommend is that you take an antibiotic which just literally the baby out with the bath water it's like everybody leaves the building and it's crazy because then if we think about what we know in terms of the intelligence in the gut and the fact that the gut is related to our immune system why would you start at ground zero again that would just be crazy But I did it anyway, because I was desperate. I was like, you know, I've got to find, because my guts were so loud (laughs) that when I was having meetings, people could hear my guts moving. And I was like, I really don't want this kind of interference. Um, Energetically, we'd say my energy was moving all over the place. Um, So I did it and it didn't work. And um, it didn't stop the problem because the problem actually, as I discovered recently from the test I was just talking about was garlic. And things that I, you know, perceived as a health food product were actually really not working for my system, creating all of the kind of, you know, bubbling and discomfort and everything. So I come from a place of get the diet right and um, be mindful of the cleansing of parasites. I like what you said the first one. Done. But there's something about the good parasites and the bad parasites. So what I'm talking about is an overgrowth of particular parasites. I think candida is a common one. And yeah. so yeah. when you're because sh- I like sugar way too much and it's something about an overgrowth of something and what they want is the sugar. So it makes you think you want the sugar and actually it's the parasites. So it's exactly about June over to you. Yeah, that's that's exactly what happens. Um and and it's like you are possessed mm-hmm. by a creature that's going, eat the sugar, eat the <laughs> sugar. <laughs> and you have no control. It just makes you do it. Yeah. Um, but we do candida. You can't actually get rid of. It has a purpose, you know. Mm. This is an overgrowth, not a clearing out. Yeah, there control. are thirteen different kinds now of candida. I've got all these kinesiology test kits, and there are many more that I haven't got. I haven't got the full problem because there are just so many. But thirteen different candidas that that they grow on the skin. They 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 populate the brain that's why a lot of people have fuzzy brains um and they can grow around the thyroid gland and cause blockage of all the thyroid hormones um but it has a purpose its original purpose is to help the body decompose after death thought right now like then that, don't really need it right now <laughs> thought you'd like that yeah yeah so what a living death canada is living death well it, it and also i think it's being thwarted because so many people are being cremated so many people are being embalmed and and they can't decompose into the ground as they would naturally and so canada has now created all these new kinds to try and get around that because its modus operandi is its own survival right you know, it's got every everything's got. And I watched this program once. Here we go. I'm on a monologue too. Um, I watched this program once many years ago about all the parasites we have on our bodies. We've got them in our eyelashes. We've got them everywhere. But you're right. The ones in the bowel. I uh, unfortunately had amoebas, which I acquired in South America, which I was then given a medication for. This was 1977, 78, something like that. This medication was taken off the market later because it was killing people. How did you react? You know what? I'm from strong 
Yorkshire <laughs> roots and, and Cumbrian roots. And I, I'm just like, no, I'm not going. Um, <laughs> not yet. Um, and and so, but I was I was left with a leaky gut, which didn't really manifest for many years. Um, but it has been an issue. So I'm I'm trying to trying to heal that now. And that was a new response to taking that medication, was it? Yeah. Wow. Well, and the parasites. But not only that, I haven't taken any Western medication knowingly, although I know it's in the foods that we eat sometimes, um, since 1982. And yet when I started with the magnesium, my bowels smelt really chemically. Not the magnesium, sorry, the charcoal. Okay, so you're right. It does. Do you think something's in the charcoal, or it's pulling stuff it's out that's in your body? Drawing stuff mm -hmm. out and expelling it because it doesn't anymore. Mm. Okay, that's interesting. Because mm. charcoal is good for if someone's ingested poison or something, just to mm. get it out of the system, isn't it? So it's good and to have it for emergencies and things. Amalgam fillings, if you have them removed, you should take charcoal before that too. I'm in the middle of having that done. Oh. Right, so I need okay. to be taking charcoal. Yes. Because one of my fillings fell out the day I was going to have it and it in my food and was eaten. <gasps> right, wow. I'll take some charcoal. Wow. wow. How, we how can heal you anything. You we can mention yeah. it. Your body can heal anything. Yeah. Your soul, your body, your mind, your, your whole person. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Um, how interesting. June, oh. I've just healed my own leaky gut. So the guy yeah. that I got him to do me the test on the machine, which is when he identified it, and I've had it for years, um, probably like you, from having been inoculated since birth, like mm. grown up abroad, just, you know, I was vaccination central. Um, and I think that is what's put all these chemicals, because he was like, you've got all these things in your system. And I was like, I haven't worn deodorant, like antiperspirant deodorant since 2002. I was like, you know, I make my own products and stuff like that. You know, what is going on? How can I have these things? And I can only put it down to the vaccinations um, because I've had so many of them. Also, I'm getting a load of chemicals from the farmer next door from his food, like what he's putting in the soil that's coming in, which I've never had before. But um I cured it by avoiding the food substances that he was telling me to avoid and by doing taking a spray called um, zeolite. So yeah. a zeolite spray, I take That's that. That's right. And then I'm on mega doses of vit vitamins. And he said, last time he tested me, he said, you've healed it. And I've definitely can feel yeah. the difference. It's not perfect, but it, I've got Ellis Danlos. So to connective tissue disorder so it's you know struggling. i know i'm moderately um hypermobile too so so do you on a, on, a, on a real low low level but yeah yeah i am but yeah i mean the small intestine is only one cell yeah. thick epithelium it's so easy for things to sneak through into the bloodstream oh and what i was going to say was there's an energetic reason for this as well so leaky gut being in the um so solar plexus and sacral chakra is like if you're a healer and you're doing healing work then you carry a lot of your client kind of um trauma in that space so it's kind of like if you don't have good boundaries in place then leaky gut is kind of like a reflection of your poor boundaries yes Would yes you I totally agree. And I often think about reflexologists, which I'm not. I'm an acupuncturist and a kinesiologist and a few other bits and bobs. Um, they're sitting with people's feet pointing straight at them and absorbing all of that the stuff root. that's coming. That comes off the root. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I know I've, I've been carrying a lot of... Um, we have somebody coming in. Don't worry, they won't be able to say anything. Carry on. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's um, a lot of emotional stuff of our own and other people's is is held in, in the abdomen too, yeah. And parasite cleanses. I have been treating people for parasites for, for a long time. So not only the candida, but um, I also have a parasite test kit and I have... Um, uh, advice from my the guy who trained me in uh, children's acupuncture 
some of the things he suggested for children to take, they wouldn't touch with a barge pole. Um, chili powder and 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 lemon pips and um, <laughs> yeah, ground up lemon pips. They work, but you know, how are you going to get it? I mean, you can mix them in yogurt, but you know, kids are smart. They don't. What about those capsules that you make up? Like just put them in the capsules. Yeah, you can, but it, children don't like swallowing that's true. tablets and capsules either. But I think that's really clever with the castor oil capsule. Hadn't heard of that. That's amazing. Yeah. It doesn't sound like it's it American. Well, it's awful. It tastes yeah. terrible. Ugh. So you can't taste them and you have it right yeah. before bed. So it's kind of digesting. And I think it's, it goes, oh, I can't remember the science behind it. It goes right up to the end of the process. No, I'm not going to say it because I don't know it well enough. I'll figure it out for a future session. Okay. Well, if it's frozen, yeah, if it's frozen, then when it goes into the stomach, it, there must be some things that are protected from the stomach acid, perhaps, because your body system is going to slowly, is going to thaw it out, sorry, quite quickly. We're at 37 degrees. So yeah. I'm going to stay present. Like, something about where it comes to like a little doorway or something, and it's somewhere where things don't usually get. And so it absorbs them from that place. I'll check my facts. Maybe the doorway's down here. I don't know. Yeah. There's something. Well, I mean, expect you mean like a sphincter? Some, yeah, something like that. It's something about it gets somewhere where things don't normally get and absorb stuff that isn't normally absorbed. I'm being really vague and very sorry. Sounds like a filter. Yeah. Yeah. But I certainly didn't, I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel any benefit. I didn't feel like anything had happened. No. So I'm not sure if it's one that I would repeat. Unless mm. I was wrong, but I got a high dosage. I took the five every night, did it for, the, I think it's five days. Um, yeah, the power guard definitely did a something. I would, garlic in it does have garlic in it. I would say that even though I'm parasite free, I'm still got those voices calling for sugar. Okay. So, but, but is that a different thing? Is there like the biological calling for sugar? And then there's the emotional. So if I'm having a crappy day, I'm like, I really want some chocolate. And then and I'm a really sensory eater as well. So if chocolate's been in the fridge and you get that crunch thing, sometimes it's not even about the chocolate, it's the sensory thing. So it might not be the parasites, that might just be you. <laughs> it is, I was, yeah, it is me. I, I'm just letting people, the audience know to have realistic expectations over yeah. your um, eating because as you know, it's emotional eating um, quite often that we are subject to because it's so readily available, isn't it? It's like, oh, I've had a bad day. I'll go and get a chocolate orange. Mm -hmm. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, don't yeah. think the site cleanse is gonna change you as a person. It's not gonna make you only ever want salad and be like tiny. <laughs> That's not how it works. This is about balancing your gut and getting things moving. No, and salads aren't great in the winter. I just want people to know that if they think eating salads is a good thing, it's not. Okay. Especially if your spleen is struggling. If you're a worrier and you are working really hard and your energy is, is out there a lot, your, your spleen energy is going to be depleted. And especially in the winter, you want warm stuff soups and stews and lovely things like that which is what i usually have and i don't crave sugar most of the time however we have become a food share location with the co-op local co-op and she sent me over here with flapjacks oh, and i'm looking at it and i'm going i'm quite tired today i feel a bit put out that I have to do all this cleaning. So I just, I had one and I, it hasn't had a bad effect, but, but I see that's, that is the other thing. I think you, we can, we can clear the stuff that causes us disturbances. I was off wheat and dairy for many years, like many years, and it made a difference, but clearly that wasn't the whole picture because there was still emotional stuff here. And I went through some things that really made me sad and I was trying to plow on and I just got more and more puffy like but it's going now so that's really really good and it's it's those experiences you, you don't want to reveal too much to your patients of yourself that's not a good idea because then they start asking you more things about yourself and it becomes about you not about them um, so I try not to I say about someone else I know someone else who had this and blah, blah, yeah. blah. But also the, um, what was I going to say? The parasite cleansing. Thing. No, I want to go back to that. No, yeah. 
it's it's just yeah you can you can clear anything and you can take in i think it was about blessings gratitude Ta-da. is that backwards i don't no, know it's oh it's not it's beautifully written as well thank you that's my writing um trying to make sure that everything i take in i take deep breaths before i eat and i just do a blessing like traditionally most cultures do do that Hmm. and just taking time and and it seems like when I eat in a hurry that really makes things worse yeah something about mindful Hmm. eating isn't it paying attention Hmm. to the taste and the swallow and the knowing when you're feeling full because as a child I was trained to clear the plate so I just go in and plow 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 till it's gone and my son would look at me and he'd go you've finished and I've only just started mine and it's just a habit Yes. And it's about sitting and thinking about what you're eating and knowing that you're full and, and being okay with putting some in the bin if you've not finished it all. I was never good with waste. We were never allowed to leave the table until the plate was clean. You know, and, and untraining yourself can be quite difficult, I think, from that kind of mindset. Yeah, and and, and actually, I, I can't eat as much as I'm getting older. My stomach doesn't want... I used to eat huge platefuls of stuff, and I was a skinny little thing. And now I have to just have less because it's full I'm full faster I look forward to that (laughs) I think um there is something definitely mindful eating is really really important but it is really um difficult to remember sometimes to do that and some people are just going to naturally move through things faster because Mm -hmm. they aren't like me when I came on here I had like five minutes to shovel in a sandwich and I knew that it was the wrong thing to do but I had to do it because I had to eat in order to function so it's like it's this kind of and I'm feeling it my body's going how dare you (laughs) shovel all of that in here you didn't tell me that was gonna happen (laughs) exactly Oh, and that was my question for you, June. I know about the salad thing because I cannot stop craving mashed potatoes so I'm eating a lot of um mashed potato and mince and cottage pie that thus therefore and shepherd's pie but I wanted to know about watercress because watercress is just in season at the moment and so mm-hmm. I'm eating a lot of that and that's full of iron and that's and quite spicy and it's spicy mm-hmm. that's the key thing yeah anything that that heats you up a little bit is is okay see there are raw foods carrots are are still warm even if they're raw you know, and there's, there's, I've got, I've got a, a, I can, I can pop in my food diagram that my teacher gave me with the different foods on a, on a scale. And if you look at the warm and hot foods, it's like a Christmas dinner. It's got sprouts, it's got carrots, it got roasted meats, it's got <laughs> all sorts of the, you know, I imagine chestnut, chestnuts are in, are they in there? They should be in there. Chestnut roasted, oh, I just love roasted chestnuts Mm -hmm. um and then in the summer you've got all the cooling things they grow at the right time bananas grow in tropical countries where people are usually hot and dry and they need the cooling moistening effect of the bananas we don't so much need that especially not here in york where it's awfully damp and cold no, I'm not allowed to eat bananas. They're absolutely lethal for um, people with Ellis Danlos, latex, histamine intolerance, all that kind of stuff. They're like really mm. bad. So mm-hmm. that's interesting. I can only eat them when they're just right. So just from green to yellow. The second there's any speckles on them, they make me feel really unwell. Really mm. for me. Too much sugar then at that point because it just gets sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. Mm. So yeah, that's probably it. Mm. Yeah, you can you can eat them if they're cooked they're more easily digestible um so (laughs) one of the things i say to people well you can you can uh, bake them in their skins and then cover them in chocolate dark chocolate that would warm them up (laughs) are you eating the skin in this scenario oh no 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 (laughs) bake them in the skin it's gonna cover her banana in chocolate i can see it (laughs) yeah yeah. But well, I lived without banana. My children lived without bananas for most of their lives because it can create more snot. And um, if you're already that way inclined, dampness, uh, yes, yeah. it's not great. No, but no bananas if you're phlegmy. Is that what you're saying? Or it's if not. Hot. If you run hot, then don't run. No, run cold and damp. Don't have a banana. 
run hot, have a banana. So if you look at your elements, Tamar, I think you do run a bit hot, don't you? Aren't you quite, isn't there quite a lot of fire in your chart? So if you run yeah. hot, like June's chart is really watery. So June should not have bananas. Whereas you, I actually do have quite a lot of fire in my chart, but bananas shouldn't have me. So because of the latex and everything else that's in them. So this is where DNA is helpful. Why mm? is there latex in bananas? Am I missing something? Is this a natural? You're thinking yeah. rubber gloves. Yeah. <laughs> latex is plastic, isn't it? No? No, there's latex in like lettuce and all kinds of stuff. It's the white liquid when you break, like weeds, if you break them. <laughs> Like when they're grown fresh, et cetera, you see the white liquid, that's a latex. It's full of nutrients and things like that and really, really good for you. But a latex allergy is is not necessarily an allergy to that, if that makes sense. So are they taking the natural latex and making it into some kind of rubbery, plasticky substance right every oh. day to some all day? Because they take they rubber have... from the rubber tree, don't they? they take yeah, that. yeah. Um but there is this latex, like huge immune boosting stuff, which is why when you pick salad, you want to eat it within the hour because you want that like immune boosting white liquid inside you. Dandelions have it as well. So next I time. was just about to say dandelions, milky. That's it. The milky latex. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Which is probably quite good for your gut because it kind of, you know, will help with the kind of stretching and the kind of, you know, integrity, perhaps, maybe. Yes. Um, just not leaking into the rest of your body, which is incredibly painful. Yeah. It's all about balance. Oh, and there is a useful thing you could do, Claire, to help with your, you can hold your forehead and hold your tummy with the other hand and reassure it that you meant well. When you swallow it doesn't try and just pour it over. Yes. Oh. No and then if you're energy. exposed to things that aren't good for you or feel like they've disturbed your energy, you can tap the inside corner of the eyebrows underneath the eyes, underneath the collarbones, and on the side of the ribs, sort of where your bra might come to if you wear one. And um, yeah. This is called the emotional freedom technique. No, this is this is health kinesiology, mm -hmm. um, allergy tapping thing. So it's okay. eyebrow, I can share and that as well. This and then that. So that's if you've eaten something you shouldn't have. So after every time I eat a chocolate orange. Yes. This. You can release all the bad bits. This. Yes. This and eat loads of charcoal. Yes, <laughs> which I do anyway. When I've abused, I eat charcoal, but I hadn't given it the level of depth of contemplation you have, Tamar, when thinking about the fact that it was going to absorb all the good stuff at the same time. So I will take it if I've gone out drinking because I barely drink. So I'm talking if I've had one or two drinks, then I'll take charcoal with my vitamin C and everything else. But I guess that's making it the vitamin C redundant. Or would you think there was a kind of if I ate loads of vitamin C, there would be a kind of override we need to look at the science of this i think but it was just that medications aren't something you're naturally having in your body so it's going to see it as an alien thing and absorb it if vitamin c is something we should be having maybe it would ignore it i'm not sure well it depends because it gets absorbed really quickly vitamin c so have it at a different time than the than yeah, i think the, you um, take it in the morning and have your medication at night you might be okay mm -hmm. yeah that's what i do yeah and and your body excretes the extra vitamin c so that's why they talk about bowel tolerance levels because you, once you've absorbed enough then it goes all right that's enough it comes out but i would take the charcoal overnight but are you saying take the charcoal in the morning well it depends when you have your medication i guess because my medication is a nighttime one so i would oh. take the charcoal in the morning so it's not affecting the medication because that would have gone by then right it's timing right. it around your lifestyle, I think, is what I'm hearing. Exactly. Personal, yeah. everything personal. June, yeah. you know, you said if your body has too much vitamin C, your body expels it. Would it make your wing mm -hmm. turn a funny colour? Well, it's bees that do that, usually. And C. And is that because you've had he too does much? too. I haven't noticed so much. But but bees definitely turn it yellow. Because that, that's another one that once you've had enough, it it, it expels it okay so is that my body telling me that i need to lower the dosage well it's not going to hurt you okay. there is no hurt. you could lower the dosage and see what happens 
yeah. with vitamin C, don't low go to bowel tolerance because if you're someone that naturally goes on the constipated side of things, um, then you want to go to bowel tolerance where basically your bowels are moving regularly. Yeah, you'll find that your intake fluctuates with what's going on. So you start being a bit more run down. You take more if you're feeling really well. You take less. You literally use your bowels like the Indians do as a kind of barometer on how you're feeling. Yeah. June, I've been feeling more constipated and I don't usually get that anymore because I take so much vitamin C. So I've also had a similar kind of like, and um, I was talking to another medium because I was saying last, at the beginning of this week, I had quite a bad headache and I don't get, I'm not someone who gets a lot of headaches. Um, and she, and then I was saying, I feel really cold. And she said, that is just the old, there's a massive kind of upgrade, 11, 11, 11 happening on Saturday. And that's just the old energy of the old kind of wound kind of moving through you. It's like, yeah, because everything has to, you know, be released. I do this spiral because it goes down into the earth. Um, so I just think that's worth mentioning. If anyone else is feeling really cold, then try to understand that the spiritual side of that is that's old energy that is basically cold old scorpionic hidden deep energy that is trying to release itself into the earth so is there anything we need to do to help that move through or just give it time and wait for it to happen eat warm yeah. food as june suggests i think it's all about kind of you know nourishment and um just be a, i'm really feeling a sense of alone time venus entered libra on wednesday um, there's a real kind of desire for in, inner peace going on at the moment and to get inner peace it's quite often easier to just do that in isolation than it is to try and involve others so there's a kind of following because we're in the Sarwain season so it's this withdrawal and doing this shadow work of self-exploration self-investigation letting the giving these things a space and opportunity to come up in a safe way so if you need to cry allowing yourself that space to cry or that space just for those messages to come because if there's too much busyness then we keep shelving inadvertently because there's no space for them to come in so I think it's really important that people make great consideration over that and say no to social engagement more than yes yes it's November <laughs> very like good very good <laughs> uh, remember what you do in december because you got until solstice to stay like that <laughs> i think i'm just going to carry on with november for me it's <laughs> november leave me alone no i don't want to <laughs> that's brilliant I love it. um we're also under the reed moon at the moment as well so this new moon is reed on monday so reed is kind of the goddess of the underworld so again this kind of darkness this allowing the connection with the deeper emotions because reed is partly submerged in water so and points upwards straight so it's the truth and you think about swords in tarot it's the truth it's emotions it's justice so this moon this new moon coming is just yeah it's gonna be really powerful i'm always saying that but it is it i, I feel like i'm always <laughs> Oh, it massively is and that's the thing it's kind of there's no moving away from that I'm just trying to think if there's anything else worth sharing with you um have anybody have you got any questions about astrology either of you or anything? I do I have a question yeah the reed moon is that what is that the Celtic name for it yes so the old yeah the old Celtic pagan name for it because I seem to have lost, oh no, it's early, isn't it? It's really early on Monday. Yeah, I the, the, the native North American names for the moons are different. Oh yes, is that's it, my culture. So. It's the beaver, I think it's the beaver moon this time. I thought I had it written down there in my calendar, but my calendar does weird things. It has a mind of its own. It was the hunter moon last month and then it's beaver this month, I think. Yeah, whereas we were ivy and now we're going into reed and I've really got a bee in my bonnet, a beaver in my bonnet about <laughs> people being, and maybe it's gone from your calendar because you're living in this country and it's like, ah. 
I want you to understand that you are in this culture right now. And so therefore you will go with this moon cycle because this moon cycle is based on the Celtic trees and the yes. Ogham language, which is the language of the trees. So, and it makes Perfect. sense. Well, they say it's probably a very similar meaning, but reed is also, when the reeds were like this, you think about all the wind whistling through the reeds, the reed instruments, flutes, calling the ancestors, the sound as it makes across riverbeds. But by this point, people knew because the reeds were dying that it was time to kind of move inland. And then the reeds, when they come out at the other end of the season, when they start showing the first flowers, there's like, you know, another sign. It's like a move and a mad, you know, that kind of nature's way of saying, right, this is what's going on with the season, folks. Buckle down. Beautiful. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yes, it does. So this is that reed is also, she's there to maintain the balance between the light and the dark. So I just say as well, in all of this new moon energy, this emotional depth, this darkness, find the light, keep the light, because the light is the things we're, gra we're grateful for, because things will come up and then you'll clear them a lot faster. Be grateful for that. Be grateful for, you know, just make sure your your investigations are as balanced as they possibly can be. So every for every negative thought you have, try and have a positive one. For every negative memory, try and bring up a positive one so that you stay, you know, in a sane place, not in a kind of, you know, well of your own misery from which you can't climb the slippery walls to release yourself from. Oh, we are yeah. in a space in my house of, thank God it's Friday. So we'll try and bring some of that in. Yeah. <laughs> Too true. Yes, we're ready for the weekend. Slippery walls. Oh boy. Yeah, it, it, it's, it brings me to visions of films of people being flung down wells and things uh, um well, I think you know, wells. <laughs> back to parasites um there used to be something that i had always in my clinic and in my house and it was grapefruit seed extract and the company i used to get it from was higher nature now i've kind of moved away from them because they sold the business and i wasn't quite sure about the people who bought it but it is something that people might want to investigate um there is a whole um anti-grapefruit kind of attitude in the medical community it's a bit like the anti um saint john's wort attitude it's going to affect your medication this is not actually based on proper science this is based on someone overdosing themselves personally, personal choice. We all have personal choice. There are no fixed rules for everybody. It's just, we have to get away from that. But but this person did that and he he just, he made himself really, really ill with, with St. John's wort. So everybody went, oh, well, we must all avoid St. John's wort then. And, and there was no proper trials done, no proper investigation. It was just a knee jerk reaction. And this was like 20 years ago now, maybe more but it still holds and nobody knows why they're saying it. They're just, they trot this out. Don't take St. John's word, it'll affect your medication. Same with the grapefruit. I, I have no idea what that's based on. I've never seen a study that says that. But anyway, if you are medication free and you have parasites, it might be worth looking into that. It's good for putting externally on things, you know, like you mentioned ringworm before, that's a skin parasite so you know you can you could work on that but um colloidal silver is also very good for these sorts of things as well um internally and externally um and yeah the castor oil in the navel it's amazing it's amazing it smooths the skin i mean there are these tiny little um tags that it's l molluscum it's it's like a another fungusy type of thing that grows on the skin. And and the candy, the candy, the, the, the castor oil in the navel seems to smooth the skin as well as the internal organs. I mean, it just smooths everything, smooths the hair. People put it on their hair, but you don't need to necessarily just pop it in your navel every night. Yeah. Very good advice. 
And I would say bitters. So black walnut, things like that are really good. And that's one of the ingredients in those parasite remedies is anything that's really bitter that's going to basically clear. And because they don't like bitterness, really, they like sweet things generally. So the, and yeah. that your diet in general, the kind of reintroduce the bitters. That's really good for the digestive juices and get rid of all of this mm. stuff. Yeah. In Chinese medicine, bitter is the taste of the wood element. And it's 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 very good for yeah it's very good for for the liver and the gallbladder particularly. I would so that would explain why I would advocate that then. Yes, yes. So, Swedish bitters. Do do you remember those? They're yep. Yep. still around. Yep, I think. That's where they are. Right. Well, people, we're nearly at time. So Tamar, yeah, we are. Thank you for joining us, June. It's been an absolute pleasure. I do hope you'll come back and talk with us again in future. I would love to. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm always in the hub. It's the People's Health Alliance little hub that we have um every Friday in the Scout Hut here. Um, for the local people to just come in and talk about health. So yeah. And thankfully nobody's beating the door down as far as I can tell. <laughs> so, it. I better go and open it now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. A pleasure to talk to you as always. And we'll see you all again in a couple of weeks. See you yes. later. Bye. Take care.